Hi everybody, this is Gary Dean with Sentiment Timing and this is our technical video report for Thursday, September 26, 2024. So we, we had Micron that uh, reported after hours yesterday and it was a good report and that really just jacked the market up. Uh, we had the S&P that was gapping up. It was close to 50 points at one point. Um, and something I had wrote in our in a premium report is that every time we've had one of these gap ups to new highs, we've actually have come back down and almost closed this gap. And you can see today we actually did come down and close it. So when we when we when the bulls gap this up to new highs, it, it actually if you have a little bit of patience, it's a great fade. And you look for like this was we made the top at fifty seven sixty eight, made the low at fifty seven eighteen. So just about sixty points on it. This was sixty points. So every time they've done this, we've had a uh, you know here you can see they gap it up to new highs, and we came back down. So this type of trade, um, you know, I. I I should have put something out saying it that, you know, you could take a short trade on it, but uh, it, it's just, I knew it was moving pretty quick and it would have been dangerous. So the one thing that I'm really kind of get noticing here is no, I mean, th these gap ups, this was an enormous gap up. This was a big gap up and look at the momentum. It's just really staying down. It's not, it's not uh, fixing any of the bearish divergences or the sell signals. And but the thing is that the bears are not able to get it through any major resistance zone. So we this AI has been in a buy uh, for the S and P since uh, November uh, November uh, September eleventh, and you can see they never we we haven't gone to a sell signal yet. So once you know you can see we're getting close. Like right now, what they're doing is is riding the line on it where. If we do go down, then we will we'll look into a sell signal. And the only thing is that sometimes they just chop back and forth when we're when we're just consolidating. But the thing is, the fact that they start coming up, usually the next move is to the downside. So we have some bearish divergences. I'm going to go back to the 15 minute chart because in the morning notes, I had said that when we were gapping up, like I said, 48 points, we were going to be well above the 5750 trigger. And from, you know, I, I said, don't be surprised to see them, you know, sell this back off and, and really go nowhere. Even though we did go a lot of places, we ended up right at the 5750 level. I was a little surprised about this uh, coming down this low. I really thought this was the low right here. But in any case, it, it, it's here, and now we don't have any bearish divergences on the 15-minute chart, so that's suggesting that we're going to have to come up and make a new high and then head down. But the thing is, the fact that we have it on the daily chart, we have it on the 60-minute uh, chart, and we have it on the weekly chart, I, I wouldn't be banking a whole lot on just one missed uh, sell signal if we if they don't if they don't do this. So um, everything else, nothing has really changed. You know, the bulls now have to get it above the fifty seven sixty seven level, and if they do that, then we you know there's a shot that we're coming up to the fifty eight hundred. And the bears are going to have to get it. You know, the first thing they're going to have to do is get it through. Let's. I'm going to just going to go here because we're we're going. We're only talking about eight points. So my get my thing is they're they're going to have to get the uh, price below this 5697 level. You can see this is a gamma level. Uh, we've had it's been used as support for a pretty long time and this is what they need to break and if they break it then we're going to get that quick move down to the 5648 and then we start coming into the you know where uh volume trigger and stuff like that but right now that you know they haven't really been able to take out any uh you know any major support levels so the the market's just you know taking whatever news and then got grabbing it higher and and then coming back down and just doing the same thing i don't think it's that healthy for the market to be gapping it up this many times because even you know these gaps typically do get closed and we have some of them that are that are way way below um in these levels here so it, it i'm sorry this one here uh so th there's there's gaps that need to get filled but right now it, it's not 
it, it, it was just really a lack of sellers. We've been seeing them step in a little bit more lately, uh, but overall, there's really not a whole a whole bunch. You know what I mean? We they haven't they ha we haven't had any major move down. I think once they do, they are going to catch the a lot of bulls leaning the wrong way. And one of the reasons why I think that is what I again in the premium report. If you notice the put call ratio, actually, hang on a second. Okay, so this is uh, something I've been showing uh, our premium members. I'm just trying to get it lined up. Okay, so basically what it is, it, it's a fractal pattern. And you can see it from here. Uh, actually, man, this is really, it's not too big. Hang on one second. All right, I'm not going to get this to fix. But here's the fractal pattern that I was pointing out. And this is the put call ratio. So you can see that we, we, were, we had the spike up. And then we came down and spiked up and then came all the way down. And I'm going to move my, uh, now I'm going to move this here so you can see it. So here, this is the fractal pattern that I was talking about. And from there, it was suggesting that we were going to get this kind of move. And if you notice, uh, hang on again, this is frustrating. Okay, actually, I can probably do this. No, yeah, there we go. Okay, so basically, it, it, the, the fractal pattern that I'm, I'm following is really more in this right here. So this, you can see that this is extreme low uh, put call. That means that there is no nobody had protection. We got a bounce and down, and and then that was really the final move here. So here you can see we have basically the same the same exact uh, pattern in play right here you can see this right here and then now we're coming down to the to the bottom part so i'm i'm more on the side that we we're getting close to a, a, a much more important top than i think some people are really uh thinking right now so let's check out our trades for today and as you can see, um, we didn't have a great day today. It was more my fault on it because I actually had a long and a short position uh, with the, the actual calendar spread. And I kind of misjudged the whole delta and the gamma and stuff like that because the ones that I bought were, were down pretty good compared to the ones that I was selling. So it, it ended up, it was, you know, we're, we're still up almost 17% on in the fund right now. This is a little hit. Now, what I'm going to be doing is moving forward is I'm going to, I want to keep a cash position. Uh, it, once once we close the markets, uh, I want to be I want to be cash, and then once we see what the market's doing, like this one, we could have very easily um, just sold the uh, bought the puts and then sold one, and this move here would have had our position. Uh, you know, obviously gaining more than the ones that we sold because we had more time. But um, it, it, so that, that's how I'm going to be moving these just because I it's it's you know, this was the first gap up like major, major one since I've been doing these calendar spreads. And they're uh, they do actually hit, you know, they, they hit them pretty good when you have these gap ups like this. So moving it to, you know, being cash at the end of the day uh, and then taking those positions the same type of way which we may not even have to go out that far like so instead of doing the octobers or we, we can I, I can do a couple days out because i'm going to close it the same day i just want to keep an eye on what the delta and gamma is and what they're you know what these options should do with each time each like say uh, price movement that ha that takes place. So that's going to be what I'm doing moving forward. Um, but the one thing that I, I want to just go back to this and show you is, I mean, the Apple trade right here. Um, I mean, it, it's in, that's the thing that I, I, I've been doing it with the spiders and the S&P uh, 5, the SPX. But the thing is, and the reason why is because I could do it on a daily basis. I mean, I could do this on a daily basis as well, meaning that I buy the, you know, I'm buying a, a October 25th call and I'm selling in October 4th. So this is up a lot more than uh, than, than what it was. And, and 
you know, you just you, you have to use the high volatility uh, 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 stocks that IV that's there, just so you know you're going to be able to get a premium from it. But um, it, it's a, it, I mean, I liked it with the strategy today. Just with the gap up, kind of gave me the little, you know, all right, maybe this uh, we got to I got to think about holding these uh, overnight, and and I'm still feeling that out. But like I said, it's been working pretty good, so. Yeah, I'm going to be sticking to this uh, to this program. So uh, that's really about it. Have a great night, and I will talk to you.